Welcome to Donaldson Clean Solutions webinar, Mobile Fueling for Modern Engines. I'm Jim Doyle, Senior Engineer at Donaldson. This webinar will run approximately 20 minutes. The objectives for this presentation are to maximize equipment uptime by reducing injector damage and premature fuel filter plugging, to prevent dirty wet fuel from getting into your engine, and to go over some best practices for fuel handling and storage uh, in mobile situations. Modern high pressure common rail equipped diesel engines are very sensitive to particulate down to one and a half to three microns. These modern high pressure uh, pump and injection systems are built and serviced in a clean room environment uh, to limit contamination and they must operate in those conditions as well. The modern high pressure common rail injector has a fuel flow control area in the top portion of the injector highlighted there uh, in the schematic and when new it's a smooth clean surface that control valve is controlling how much fuel returns back to tank versus how much is forced down into the injector the wear that we're going to discuss here doesn't occur down in the nozzle going into the engine it's up in the control valve area in the top portion of the injector. And that image there, that scanning electron microscope image, is, a, is a, an undamaged surface. That valve there is opening and closing three to five times each time the piston comes up uh, in, the, in the cylinder and controls injection flow of fuel into the cylinder and away from the injector. If that surface in that valve, which has a maximum open tolerance of about three microns, has particulate trapped in it when it tends to close, it can impact the surface between the two mating surfaces of the valve, beginning to dimple the surface and then shortly thereafter getting fuel to flow across that surface and begin to leak. That leakage of high pressure fuel at 30 to 45,000 psi with fine particulate in it will cause erosive wear across that surface and begin to uh, allow le additional leakage back to the fuel tank and, and decrease the control of fuel being injected into the cylinder. The engine will then not meet emissions requirements. It'll produce additional soot and you'll be getting downtime and having to do injector repair. Filtration must uh, protect this in service to keep this damage from happening. And that is very, very tight filtration in comparison to previous series of engines that is the sensitivity to these new systems. In conditions where people are doing mobile fueling, bringing fuel to equipment operating out in the field, whether it's agriculture or mining or uh, fueling on any sort of job site by bringing fuel to it, there are some uh, different ways to do it and they all have some similar, uh, some similar issues. Here's a typical traditional fuel bowser trailer uh, horizontal tank. Uh, it's got it's on wheels and can be hooked up and moved around. It has a an open pipe there on top. You can see as the breather. Uh, there's very little protection there from anything in the environment it's in, in an off-road situation. There's an agricultural system on a flatbed truck or a agricultural trailer, a horizontal fuel tank with dispensing pump and and equipment on there and even at very small scale in pickup bed situations where there's a small fuel uh, tank or even oil tanks here in this case uh, in the back of the pickup truck as it runs out to fill equipment on a construction site perhaps. Uh, lots of different styles of that uh, but they can all pose uh, have the same potential issue. Um, fuel tanks traditionally have, have relied on stationary fuel tanks especially on settling of uh, contaminants. Water will con uh, condense in the upper headspace of the tank and run down and collect in the bottom of the fuel tank uh, and essentially stay out of the way of the, the bulk of the fuel in that tank. You can see a little bit of water in the bottom of these two uh, examples here of, of uh, small fuel tanks or mason jars. Uh, and you can also see some dirt there. Gravity will settle especially large particulate out of fuel quite well to the bottom of a tank. But in a mobile situation, they pose, uh, that poses a, signif a significantly different uh, problem. And that problem is you've moved this tank around 
and shaken up the snow globe of dirt and water into the fuel. The dirt and water will suspend in that fuel and generally you're driving that fuel out to a piece of equipment because you want to keep it running and get fuel in it right away. You essentially run out of time for settling out of the, out of the, of the material out of the fuel. Again, the, in a stationary situation with the dirt and water settled to the very bottom of the tank, the pickup for the pump is usually nine inches or a foot off of the bottom of that, and you're well above that contaminant that's laying in the bottom of the tank, and you can dispense nice clean fuel out into your equipment, or reasonably clean fuel out into your equipment. The dirt and the water will settle to the bottom, and they'll stay there until they get to such a level that they start to impact the fuel that's being picked up by the pump and you'll need to get a tank clean out done. Um, and they, they, can, they can contribute to fuel quality issues over time, but they're not shaken up into the volume uh, in, in a great amount in, in most cases, unless someone has disturbed the tank or pumped in at high flow rate with fuel. Uh, just to give an example of what real world tank bottoms and fuel can look like, here's a, a typical off-road fuel sample this is a tank bottom sample it shows water bottoms down below and some solids forming where the water and the fuel are contacting uh, that's likely some of the uh, glycerin in a biodiesel blended fuel or something uh, forming solids there in that case but you can see that the fuel on top the red off-road fuel is very cloudy uh, it is not clear and bright as is is uh, often talked about about fuel and it's sort of a gross quality uh, is it clear and bright is it is at least potentially somewhat clear uh, but this sample sat for a few days and the uh, sample bottle on the on the far right there is the fuel from a, a, above the water you can see it is the some of the contaminants have settled out of it it's clear you can see through it uh, and the sample bottle there the green a uh, bottle in the middle, that's the tank bottoms by themselves. They're still green and cloudy and that's mainly water and other solids that have come out of the fuel. So gravity can do a job, it just takes time. Uh, I'm not saying that this will completely clean your fuel, but at least it gets most of the contaminants out of the way. However, as we said in the mobile situation, uh, water and, and dirt has been stirred up. If it has been laying in the bottom of the tank and you move that tank, it will stir that dirt and water up into the fuel and you run the the uh, risk of dispensing that mixed up cocktail into the uh, into the equipment uh, that that can lead to some very unhappy uh, conditions filters will tend to plug very quickly with that solids associated with that water uh, and fuel mixture and other hard particulate will all be dispensed out the dispenser hose if you have just recently shaken up the sample as is shown here. So where does all this dirt and water come from? You don't tend to think that you're buying it as it's all that dirty. Uh, in fact, fuel when manufactured is very clean and, and is of pretty decent quality coming right out of the refinery. It needs some filtration um, at that point, but every time it gets moved by pipeline or tanker or truck, it can pick up a little bit more dirt. And then once it gets to a, a delivery situation, and especially in an off-road environment, uh, you can pick up dirt from the environment around you. You can see in this image, this happens to be the air inlet on a fuel truck making a fuel delivery. The truck itself is covered with dust. And this is the air inlet uh, where air is drawn into the tank as fuel is pumped out at 275 gallons a minute into a storage tank. And that is a quick wipe of the finger along the inside of that air inlet there and there's quite a bit of particulate visible on the, on the tip of my finger. Uh, that happens to be at a coal mine and they're ingressing coal dust load after load after load of fuel as they deliver. Uh, sometimes best practices of cleanliness are not used with, the, with uh, dispenser nozzles going into equipment. There would be enough debris on the nozzle of this dispenser uh, just going into a truck to almost certainly get you uh, well beyond any clean, fuel cleanliness that's recommended going into your engine. Uh, and in, even in high flow uh, off-road conditions, filling at 100 and some gallons a minute, the nozzles are dirty, the equipment is dirty, the environment around it is very dirty. It's very easy to add additional hard particulate uh, 
uh, into, uh, into the fuel as it's being moved around, especially in mobile conditions, uh, when it can be stirred up again and again off the bottom of the tank. The other contaminant that we've brought up here is moisture. And I mentioned briefly that moisture uh, typically isn't delivered with fuel, it's condensing on the headspace of the tank. The fuel in the tank itself will not saturate first and then drop water to the bottom of the tank. It's the environment around the fuel that is the source of the moisture and then condensation on the inside of the tank wall forms droplets and they run down to the bottom of the tank. Uh, moisture doesn't have to be visible, but this is an obvious example of, uh, of a location where when operating heavy duty off-road equipment at this site, you're likely ingesting a lot of moisture next to a large cold body of water. So what can be done to protect your fuel? You can just keep the fuel clean and dry. Uh, if you ask any fuel distributor or any of the oil majors, uh, it's been a warning from major OEs for at least 90 years, just keep the fuel clean and dry and you will avoid 90% of your operational issues. That's a lot easier said than done, unfortunately. It's, a, it's great advice, but the whole idea of this is to give some people some practical uh, things they can do to help keep it clean and dry. Uh, Pre-cleaning your fuel going into your mobile fuel tank is probably the most proactive way you can keep dirt from piling up in the bottom of your mobile fueling tank. In your stationary tank, that's great. It can settle to the bottom and there's some time there. But when you're, when you're committing to bringing fuel to the piece of equipment, that's because you want it to keep running uh, to keep in operation. And you don't have time to let it sit around and settle out. So to prevent that from happening, it's better to keep it from going in in the first place. And that can be done at high flow rate going into, say, a fueling truck at hundreds of gallons a minute. This is filtration on a loading arm system that's filling a high volume fuel truck going out to, to large equipment that's filling 800 or 1,000 gallons uh, uh, at a time on a, say, a mine haul truck type application. Uh, or it can be in, a, in a, even a mobile fueling truck situation here. The, uh, the large bank of eight filters in the upper uh, left of this image is filtration where fuel is going into this fueling, mobile fueling truck, but it is going through a, a large volume of filters there to prevent particulate from collecting in in the first place and there's a smaller manifold protecting fuel going out at a lower flow rate uh, to completely isolate that fuel tank there and prevent particulate from being pulled into that tank and allow it to settle to the bottom in with the fuel over time. Um, getting clean fuel into the tank will just over time dramatically reduce the amount of material there is that can possibly collect there. This is an agricultural application uh, bulk fuel sample. This is probably twice as dirty as is allowed to ever be put into equipment, but pre-filtering that fuel going into their mobile fueling truck, we have removed almost all of that particulate there, so there isn't anything collecting and building up in the mobile tank to be shaken back up into the fuel and delivered into equipment. It's a very proactive way to separate a particulate issue from your operating piece of equipment. Uh, it just prevents any, any dirt from accumulating that's coming in with the fuel itself in your storage tank. Uh, here's an example of filtering it on the way out of the storage tank, uh, the mobile, mobile piece of equipment storage tank. And you can see these filters are tucked underneath the, under the, the vehicle a bit. Uh, the close-up there on the, on the right shows there's uh, a particulate set of particulate filters off to the far right and a set of water absorption filters uh, to the to the left of that. The fuel coming out of that truck goes through particulate filtration to remove all particulate and then goes on to the water filters. And you'll notice three pressure gauges across the top there. The gauge on the far right is pressure upstream of the particulate filters. The gauge in the middle is downstream of the particulate filters and then the gauge to the left of that is downstream of the water filters. And what that allows you to do is to tell if you have a particulate issue or a water issue in your fuel. If pressure drop is building across the particulate filters, you have a particle issue. 
If it's not building up there, but it is building up on the water issue, uh, water element, you have a water issue. They will absorb water, increase in pressure drop, and show a difference on those two gauges. Doing that in combination in one filter, you can't tell which problem you have and need to solve. Doing it this way, as a last chance quality check on the way out of the tank, you can tell if you're building up particulate or water faster, and you know which issue you should be trying to deal with in your mobile fueling equipment. It's just a great way to last chance check and keep an eye on which kind of problem you might be starting to develop in your system. One other critical thing is the air we talked about, moisture. Air is also airborne dirt source uh, as seen in some of those, these kinds of images. Sucking in, at, in this case, at almost 300 gallons a minute in a dusty environment is coating the entire inside of the fueling truck over and over and over with airborne dust. Uh, a way to deal with this particular situation off of a fueling truck was to put a breather right on the, on the air inlet pipe to the tank. It needs to be appropriately sized to allow, uh, not build up too much uh, pressure uh, or vacuum as air is going into the tank, but that is a way to keep uh, particulate from ingressing into that tank and then when you fill it with the next load of fuel, it gets filled with the dirt that settled out from the air coming into the tank. So that's, a, that's another very proactive way to keep the, the dust out of the area. If you're working in a job site where you can actually sort of taste the dirt, you know that that is also getting into your fuel, it's going into your breathers, any open pipes on tanks, that kind of thing. And you need to prevent it. Uh, water management is better than trying to do water removal in these, in these mobile situations. Allowing it to build up there, it just gets stirred into the fuel every time it gets moved. So the best way to prevent it from accumulating in tanks is to not have any space for condensation to occur. Many people think in the winter there probably aren't any moisture issues because the air is very dry and, and you just don't think of water as an issue in the winter. Uh, this happens to be the underside of a fuel cap on a 500 gallon tank and those are icicles on the bottom side of that. And so every time that fuel gets up near freezing or the air temperature changes significantly and you have a significant temperature difference between the tank wall above the fuel and the fuel itself, you have a condition where you can get condensation occurring there. Uh, just like on a, on a cold glass of a, a beverage glass in the summer, you get condensation on the outside. Any of that temperature differential tends to cause condensation to begin to occur and here it was occurring right underneath the cap on this, uh, this 500 gallon fuel tank. Um, and water tends to uh, cause or, or increase the amount of solids formation uh, in, in most fuels these days. This uh, happens to be an image of a fairly wet uh, biodiesel blend of fuel. Uh, it was wet for a day or two. Water got stirred into it by being pumped around with some water and it's forming solids at the bottom of the tank there. You can see the fuel is still cloudy as well, and it has fuel solids suspended in it that are a portion of the, the biodiesel package in the fuel. Uh, this is a, sort of a microscope image of those same kinds of solids. That's uh, glycerin from biodiesel and some particulate in water. It makes a lot of gelatinous goo that collects at the bottom of tanks. If it gets stirred up in your mobile situation, it plugs filters very quickly and it can cause a lot of headaches. It's just better to prevent or to try and manage that amount of water accumulation in the system if you can. And in mobile situations, that's done by keeping the tanks as full as possible uh, and on operating equipment, filling your, your fuel tanks at the end of the day to keep them as full as possible when the fuel is warm at the end of your operating day. It prevents condensation uh, is the best prevention for in that situation. So again, keep your tanks full. It's uh, an easy way to limit that. Lastly, some uh, considerations if you're buying a tank or designing a tank or going to choose a tank to use for mobile fueling. Uh, there are some things that can really help manage the particulate and water in the, in, in the system and make it easier to deal with. Probably the most valuable thing is a dead bottom drain on your tank so that if you park your mobile truck or trailer and you can have water collect at a low point drain, an absolute dead low point drain, 
and simply open a valve and drain it out, that's your best bet. You would probably want that to be lockable so people can't steal fuel uh, or it won't get accidentally opened, but that is the easiest way to be able to get solids and any water that are collecting there out of your fuel tank. Another really nice thing to have is, is a manway access for cleaning so that you can actually see in the tank and get really get in there and clean it out on occasion. You really want to stay ahead of that and not mix up that snow globe of debris and water uh, into your fuel for dispensing and having ways to deal with that if you're buying new fueling equipment is, is the best possible way to do that. And then lastly, if you have existing fueling infrastructure, mobile fueling infrastructure that is causing issues, you're having operational issues with your equipment downstream, plugging filters or injector damage and that kind of thing, and you're going to implement some best practices for cleaning uh, fuel before it goes into your equipment, you do not want to start with a messy, dirty tank and then put expensive filters, high efficiency filters on the other end that are basically going to just detect that problem. They're going to plug quickly with either dirt or water or both. You would be much better off cleaning that system out first, then putting the filtration on, and then adopting the best practices to limit it. It'll be much cheaper than using up a lot of filters to try and clean that tank on an ongoing basis. Just get ahead of it and then stay ahead of it by using your best practices. And thank you for joining us. And you can connect with uh, My Clean Diesel if you didn't get to this uh, presentation via My Clean Diesel. Please go there. We've got lots of advice and, and tips for uh, better fuel management and, uh, and decreased downtime and best practices. Uh, and lots of uh, specs and, and other information on fuel and, and engines. That's uh, good uh, field knowledge for people operating equipment.